Snow is melting fast. <laughs> we have a short window of time before it starts to snow again, which is problematic because the lambs are due next week. But that means I'm going to have to get a shelter put up for them real quick. So that's what I'm going to start working on in this video. Uh, there's a couple of things we still don't have. Sam's going to bring home today, hopefully. But after we have that, hopefully everything will be ready to go and we can just put it all together. So I'm going to show you how to build a lambing shelter today. First things first, as always, got to feed the animals, get them looked after for the day. So there's Guts, he's good on water, I topped that up yesterday. Um, don't worry, once we get all this sorted and lambing done, next focus will be getting you in a bigger spot. So hang tight for a little bit longer, we're going to take care of you too. So that corner right there is where the lambing pen is going to go. Um, as close up against the fence on either side as possible. As you can see, that open the gate. They can come in anytime, but they like that little hill right there, so they're going to hang out there, at least until I get everything moved over. As you can see, I started trying to build it um, a few weeks ago, but we stopped because um, Sam and I couldn't decide on how to do it. So it's kind of just been sitting there waiting for the snow to melt, but I think it's melted enough that I should be able to put it up now. Um, yeah, so we're gonna start from the bottom. I gotta remeasure and recut some of those boards and pull them off of the plywood, but shouldn't be hopefully too much of a hassle to do. Hardest part is I have to remath everything, which admittedly I'm not great at, but uh, should be okay. Hopefully it'll be okay. We'll try. So I wanted to show you something and uh, First, first of all, I want to point out, you should never measure like this. Um, don't do what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just doing this because I have nowhere else to do this in this shop. I really need to clean it up, but uh, first things first, we have to build this shelter for the sheep. So anyway, this is a 12 foot 2 by 4. Um, for those of you new to woodworking, um, whenever you buy lumber, it'll be whatever the measurement is, like, uh, for instance, a 2x4 or a 4x4 four four or a 1x8 or whatever, um, the wood is always going to shrink from that. So that's not the true size. So every side will have less of an inch. So this, for instance, is the 2 side. It's actually 1.5 inches. This is the 4 side. It's actually 3.5 inches. And... The only part that should be true is the length, but I wanted to show you this, why it's always good to measure anyway. So as you can see, there is an extra almost full inch on this. Um, so it's not actually 12 feet. Uh, worth noting, because if you're ever doing stuff that needs really exact measurements, you're going to run into problems with this. Even not the most exact measurements, you're going to run into problem with this. problems with this. Um, I did when I was building my mobile sheep corral and learn to always double check the actual length of the board before I do anything with it. But uh, yeah, so what I'm doing right now is because I'm attaching it, this will be at the top of the back. So because I'm attaching it to the sides, I want to account for the extra space that those two by fours will take up. So I'm gonna have to take up three, take three inches off of the 12 foot mark, oh shoot, um, to make it the length that I need it. So again, I'll have to do that on the other, the, the front piece, and then I'll double check the sides to make sure they're the right length as well. Another thing worth mentioning is um, you want to cut on the outside of the line from where you actually need it. So I've drawn my line here, that's the, the point that I, I this is the part that I need. This is the part I'm going to discard. So I'm going to cut on this side of the line to make sure it stays the length that I need because the saw blade is not, like there's still some width to that. So I don't want to measure away from that and end up not with an exact measurement. 
Looks like they like the new pasture. So there is the perimeter roughly. Um, those are actually going to be on the tops. So that's uh, kind of the outside of the roof. Um, I'm starting with that because I don't have the 4x4 yet. It's on its way. But uh, yeah, that's going to start. So from there I'll need to cut some pieces to go vertically between these and the, the ground pieces. And to do that, I'm going to have to crowbar those ones off of those pieces of plywood. So that's the ne next test. Next task. Why is it so hard to say? So I took those apart. Um, I'm leaning them up because I still have the nails in them because we just kind of tacked them together with a brad nailer. This one didn't retain any of the nails. They're all in the 2x4, so that's why I'm not going to bother to pick that one up right now. But next thing is to remove the nails, measure, and cut. My sweeties. Hello, hello. You just love your head scratches, don't you? You're so scruffy. Poor things. <laughs> Luca over there looks particularly scruffy, poor thing. But I think this is their favorite time of day when they get their scratches. Right, sweetie? Right, sweetie? I don't know. You know you're a sweetheart, aren't you? So these are more or less the materials. It's uh, basically 4x8 plywood for the walls and the roof and a bunch of 2x4s for pretty much everything else. Uh, the thing Sam is picking up is four pieces of treated 4x4 which will go along the bottom so none of this stuff that is untreated will be touching the ground which means hopefully the whole thing will last a bit longer. Um, treated plywood and treated lumber in general actually is usually better for outdoor usage but it's also a lot more expensive so that's part of why we went with this. Um, we can still paint it and that'll help it last a while too, but uh, one thing at a time. We're gonna start the lambs get here. <laughs> Day two, let's go. So we've got the base, that's eight foot roughly, four by fours and 12 foot four by fours. I'll still have to cut them to make those the same length. Well, not the same length, but the length I need to adjust for the width of those ones. And I need to make sure those are true eight foot ones. But those will be the base, and then I can start building from there. So that's exciting. Look at that, I made a coaster. Got all my pieces cut. It did occur to me partway through doing this that I cut these 12 foot ones two inches too short. <laughs> not sure what happened there. Like I said, I'm not great at math, but Ah, oh well, we'll make it work. Um, does mean I'll have to adjust these other 12 foot two by fours as well because they're going on the top of the same side. Um, logic says I should cut them two inches shorter as well, but I am gonna wait because sometimes when I screw, think I screw things up, I didn't actually, and I'd rather not take off more than I need to. It's easier to, um, cut more off than it is to put it back on. So I'll just wait for now and measure it once it's all kind of put together. Which means it's screwing time. All right, I got my handy dandy drill with the right bit. Um, here's another bit that we'll be using to drill little holes before we put the screws in. These are the two types of screws I'll be using. Um, these ones, the brown ones, that's what these are, and I love them, honestly. I think these are the best ones um, that I've used anyway. They come in a huge pack, so get you through most projects. Um, they've got this weather-resistant co uh, coating on them, so they're not going to rust very quickly. And then I'll be using these ones. For the very bottom, which I'm not a huge fan of because they don't have that weather resistant guard that I know of, but they're a multi-purpose screw. I originally got them because um, I needed them for my kitchen table that I made, but that was an indoor job, so that was fine for that. Um, 
And the reason I'm using them is because this is the only ones I have and I don't want to go out and buy more just for this because uh, I'm running out of time. <laughs> so I'll make do with this and um, hopefully later on somehow we can reinforce with something a bit more weather resistant. But for now we'll go with this. So this is one of the sides. I haven't put it together yet. This is more or less what each side will look like. Um, right and left side. The backs and the front will obviously look a bit different. But that's how they're going to be put together. More or less. So Farnese is coming to check out my work. But this is as far as I got today. Um, a little bit frustrating. I really had a hard time getting these screws in, as you can see. So I got them started. Sam's going to come and finish the job for me later. Um, I also found out that I need a different size of screw for the top. So I can't do that either. Which is really frustrating. But I'm stopping here because I've A, done as much as I can, and B, I'm really hungry. So I'll come back to this tomorrow. Well, I realized I made another mistake. This one is at least fixable, but I'll have to redo some of the screws that I put in today. Um, which isn't the end of the world because they weren't really working anyway. So I went out and I bought um, this drill bit set, um, primarily for this one, the 532, 5 inch 32 drill bit. Um, that'll hopefully help with these screws that I got that are, they have that weather resistant coating on them, um, 5 inch again. So with any luck, tomorrow when I get back to it, won't be as much of a problem. Anyway, we'll continue tomorrow. Day three, here we go. Word to the wise, um, build one of these before you get cheap so you're not on a time crunch like I am because that's starting to make me a little anxious. But uh, the plan for today is I'm gonna undo all of these screws that I did yesterday and replace them with the weatherproof ones or weather resistant, I should say and then uh, hopefully get them all put together. Got some lag bolts to put in on the bottoms to hold them all together and we'll have the frame done. Um, at least the outside outer shell. Uh, I'll still have to do the roof which hopefully I can do today and then it'll just be a matter of putting the plywood on. So let's get started. Battery died. I have to go get the other one. I'll grab the impact driver. Um, I generally prefer the other drill to do most things. Um, I used it to build pretty much the entire mobile corral, so it can work, but uh, admittedly, it's just better for some jobs. So I'm going to use it for driving in these five inch nails, but I've still got the other one there to drill the holes first. So, to work. First part of that job is mostly done. Got most of the screws out. I couldn't get this one out, unfortunately, because uh, I don't know if you can see the head very well, but gonna focus on it. Anyway, um, it's pretty destroyed, so I'm gonna have to cut that one, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, I have the tools to do that, and then we can just drill a different hole beside it, and should be good from there. Managed to cut that off. Um, still sticks out a little bit, as you can see, but uh, as good as we're gonna get. So the next step is to remeasure these 12 foot ones um, because I forgot to account for the width of the eight foot ones. So just that little end piece that they're gonna be attaching to. So if I were to do it the way that they are, the plywood would not line up with where I've got these. So I've got to redo that, but that's not a huge deal. Um, I'm also going to put it on the other side because this one, I want to stand it up kind of that way. And uh, same thing I'll have to do with that one. Look at them happily grazing. I actually haven't given them hay for a few days now, so they haven't needed it. Um, they've got their fresh grass that they can access now that the snow is melting. Um, and they've got all their minerals and vitamins, 
They've still got their alfalfa pellets. There's still a huge pile of fresh hay over there. The grains, they really don't need any more. Um, adding any more at this point would just be waste. So not bothering. But getting back to this, you can see this was the old line. This is where they should be. So if I had done, just stuck with the original line, they, uh, the connection point between the two pieces of plywood would have been here. The one over here would not have reached. So that's why I had to do this. But not a huge deal. Easy enough to fix. So we're gonna redo that. Managed to get one side done and the other battery's dead. So I'm gonna have to take a break, I guess. Came in. Recaffeinated and recharged. We're ready to go. So we managed to get that part done. I just gotta put the tops on each of these. Um, this piece here, I'm gonna have to remeasure, and that far piece over there, I'm gonna have to remeasure. But these two pieces can go on the eight foot sides, no problem. And uh, yeah, it's going way faster and way easier now. So it really pays to have the right tools. All right, got all of this attached to itself. Those two pieces for that far one and this one here for the tops. I'll have to recut. I have to take two inches off of each one in order to make it work. I'm going to have a little bit of plywood sticking out the side, but it's not a huge deal. <sighs> Time to get cutting, and then it's just stand it all up and put it together. By the way, that piece over there is the only one I'm going to be able to stand up perfectly. The other three, I'm going to have to spin and stand up because <laughs> I screwed that up. But not the end of the world. Those ones are easy to fix. Sides are built. So the next step is to stand them up and put them all together. Um, Sam will be out here in just a few minutes. I'm gonna see if I can turn them around on my own. Um, if not, then I guess I'll have to wait. But might be something I can do at least while I'm waiting. Let's see. All right, got them all turned around the way I need them. Some of them are even stood up a bit. So now, plunk them together, do the roof, do the inside supports, put some uh, plywood on, and it should be usable. Should have it done by this weekend. All right, so that is the outside. What we did was we put two leg bolts on each corner to hold it together there, and then one five inch screw at the top to hold it together. Um, so this is just the outside shell. Next we gotta do the roof. So what I'm gonna do there is to give it a little bit of a slant, I'll have some of the spare wood just kinda pointing upward there for it to sit on. And uh, I'll be able to put some slats across like that, here and here. And hopefully that'll be enough. If I have to add more, I will. But uh, that'll give it a bit of a slant and then it'll give us somewhere to attach the plywood onto. After that, I'll put a post here and a post here in the middle, so like right across there. And that'll be kind of what I attach the, uh, the gates to. Um, I was gonna do three stalls, but looking at this now, I think I can only do two, but that's fine. Um, we'll make it work. That here, this is where the door is gonna be. So plywood, plywood there. And yeah, it's coming along. After that, all that's left, after we put those posts in, all that's left is put the uh, plywood on and it'll be usable. So we're getting there. The roof is up. There's a little bit of a pitch and we're gonna call it a day. Tomorrow, I'll uh, see if I can, but I wanna put posts in the middle of this one and that one all the way to the ground as support and it'll also help mark where the uh, stalls are going to be. There's only going to be two, so one like from that post to the middle of there and then from there to that post there. And tomorrow after that uh, I'll be putting up the plywood sides and we'll see if we can get the roof. If not, then I'll just put a tarp over it and at least it'll be usable. We're getting there. Day four and hopefully the last day. 
Um, I'm going to be using this brad nailer to tack up the plywood along the outside. Um, I'm going to wait until Sam's available to do the roof because I can't reach that high. <laughs> and uh, from there we'll do the inside. But we're getting there. There's not that much left to do. I need more clamps. <laughs> Said every woodworker ever. Thought I was going to need more clamps than this, but looks like the one is doing the job. So now just to tack it on and then I'm going to use a screwdriver to put it on permanently. So this brad nailer works more or less the same as the stapler that I showed in the last video, but you turn it on, put the battery in, and you just put it where you want to put a nail, push it up against the end, because you see that part comes out. It doesn't work if you don't have it pushed up against something. And then once it's where you want it, pull the trigger, the nail goes right in. Ernie seems to like it at least. That's good. We got it all tacked on. Now I gotta screw it on. I brought a screwdriver out, but I wasn't paying attention and forgot to bring a battery, so I'm gonna go find a battery. All right, I have a battery, and I brought two different sizes of screws. I got my one and three quarter inch and three inch screws. I got two different kinds because it'll depend what I'm screwing into. If I'm doing screwing straight into that, I'll be using the one and three quarter inch ones. And if I am screwing into that, then I'll be using the three inch, just because I don't want screws sticking out the other side. One all done, now I just gotta do the rest. And remember to leave an opening so I can get into it. Got my little helpers. Where's Eugenie? There she is. Front side, all done. So now, just the rest of the sides. The hardest part, honestly, is just moving the plywood to where you need it and then keeping it there. Much easier said than done. <laughs> but it's looking more or less how I wanted it to, so this is, this is doing good. Front and back is up. So I just gotta do two sides. And the roof, but we're gonna hold off on the roof because we've decided that we need to have one here, one here, and one here before we put the roof on. So for now, we'll just put a tarp over it and it'll at least be usable. So if we don't get that done before lambs get here, then we still have somewhere safe we can put them. Um, Sam's got a nice insulated tarp that we'll put over the top. And uh, we got a couple of things we'll put on the inside for now so we can kind of section it off. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be usable and it'll do the trick. So, almost there, yay! Walls are done! So I'm going to call it a quits from here. Um, Sam's going to go get that tarp later and some more lumber so we can do more of the roof and then hopefully get that on soon. Um, so as you can see, inside is complete. For that, um, for now, I've got this kind of, I'm going to make some makeshift stalls if I have to. Hopefully we won't get to that point, but if I have to, I have to. Um, you see around here, tried to make it as tight a seam as I could everywhere. There's a couple spots that aren't perfect, but it's my first time. <laughs> anyway, so I guess the next part is put that tarp on tomorrow and hopefully we can have it usable because lambs are due on Friday. It is currently Sunday. We are currently on lamb watch. <sighs> We're getting there. So minor update. This is all we've managed to do with the roof so far. Um, I'm on my own today. So at least I managed to get that but ladders scare the crap out of me. I am majorly phobic of heights, plus ladders are dangerous, so I couldn't set it up so it would be st uh, sturdy enough in the middle, and even just doing that was super sketchy, so I'm going to hold off. I've got some cuts made, so whenever Sam gets here, he can help me do the middle part, and then I can do a post down here and at least get them inside done while we wait to do the roof. 
but the roof is slow going just because it's probably the most dangerous part and I really don't want to get hurt making this, so I am just holding off for now. So far, no signs of lambs anyway, so we've got a bit of time, but hopefully we can get it done soon because uh, we don't have a whole lot of time. Getting there though. Roof framing is done. So the next step is attach this post in the middle ish like that because that's going to be the marker for where we put our stalls so we'll have doors going to either side and a little wall going to the back once we have that this part attached we can start putting the roof on starting with the middle piece and working our way out um, Sam was kind enough to help me with this part because heights really scare me and I'm not super confident with that and I just fell in a hole <laughs> but uh, He's a lot more confident and capable than I am with this sort of thing, so he is a huge help. Thank you, Sam. So we used some treated leftover scrap lumber for right on the ground because obviously the lighter colored piece is not treated and we didn't want it to rot too fast. So we put that on, attached it right to the middle, and now we're putting the plywood on top. Um, matter of straightening it out but the middle piece is the only one that's measured properly so that's why we're starting there and once we get that up the other two on the sides and then we have a lid we can just do the inside and I could hopefully do all of that myself because I'll be able to reach it without having to climb a ladder Yay! we have the lid on it is entirely usable now um, Thanks so much to Sam for doing that part because uh, that really freaks me out. We still plan on putting a tarp over it just to fill in the gaps because once you go inside you can see it ain't perfect but it'll work. One thing if you're going to house livestock in any structure, as you can see it's not quite perfectly lined up but that's okay. It's still really strong. Sam was up there standing on it so it's, uh, it's going to do the trick. But uh, if you have livestock in any structure, you want to make sure there's plenty of ventilation. So that's why there's a lot of gaps around the roof and I'm not putting an actual door on here. So the next step, Sam wanted to drill a hole in that and stick some rebar through it so it's not going to go anywhere. I'm also going to bring in some straw just to put, out, put down as bedding. Probably going to get that out of here. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's not going to stay there. Um, then I'll be attaching a wall from the post straight to there and then gates on either side and then I just got to set it up ready to be used for mamas and babies and then it's done yay moved the sheep yesterday which means I just closed that gate while they were in there but uh, looks like we lost the race against time to get the lambing shed done because if you look over there you'll notice there's only four of the St. Croix ewes sitting over there. And that's because number five, AKA Casca, is in there with her little lambs. I don't know if you can see them, but I'll go in there in a second. But uh, yeah, um, we'll have to finish the rest of the building once uh, lambing is over so I don't want to disturb them too much and we are on serious lamb watch now but I just wanted to show you guys where we were at so uh, this is exciting we have there's Casca and her two little babies we've got a ram lamb and a ewe lamb healthy 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 all around everyone's doing well Sorry, my phone ran out of storage. But anyway, I missed the birth by minutes. <laughs> but uh, everyone's doing well. Lambs have gotten their colostrum, cleaned off their umbilical cords, having a little snooze, relaxing in the shed. For now, I just um, kind of barricaded them in so they can't really go anywhere. But this will keep them safe from the elements while they're recovering. But anyway, thanks for watching the video. Like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. We've got some exciting stuff coming. 
and we'll see you next time.